everyone, it's Vanessa. I'm making my grand return and I'm gonna do it by doing a booktube tag. I've been tagged in about three things since I've been gone for like a month-ish and so I'm gonna try to catch up on those book tags. I think I'll start with one of the easiest ones and the most fun ones is the booktube watching tag. I was tagged in this by Mercedes at Mercy's Bookish Musings. Let's get started on the questions. So I am subscribed to 113 channels. I actually like went through and looked through my list that I hadn't looked at it in a while. About maybe five to ten of these are non-booktube channels. I really looked through this list and I decided to unsubscribe to some people. Um, not necessarily because I didn't, I don't enjoy their content anymore but mostly because they disappeared and I didn't even notice um, and this is something that I feel like happens constantly and I don't know if like people should say goodbye <laughs> or if it's like I mean it's their prerogative to leave but it's kind of strange when like you click on something and you remember the profile picture but there are no videos there so like they completely deleted any semblance that they were ever on booktube and I that's kind of sad to me so anyway about 113 after my like 10 ish channels that I said goodbye to because they're no longer around sadly I normally watch booktube at random times it's typically after work I don't really have the mental capacity in the first thing in the morning to watch and I also don't watch really late at night but I watch after work often and I usually watch like a few videos I don't watch like an hours of time anymore I used to really do that the year after my undergrad when I really had nothing to do <laughs> and every time that I came home from work that is all I did for like two hours. I try to watch less in hope that that means I read more slash do other extracurricular things. So I balance watching, reading, and making my own videos pretty well, I think. Not in the past month, again, which is kind of going to be my caveat this whole video. You know, since I've been on booktube in the past two years, I have been pretty good at remaining consistent. I like to post at least once a week, um, and if I can't do that, around 10-ish days at a time. And it usually works out that way where I can watch what I want, and I can read what I want, and it it balances itself out. But lately I have definitely been more of a reader than I have been a watcher and a maker of content. I don't know if there's really a difference between videos that I like watching versus videos that I like making. I definitely love watching vlogs and reading vlogs that I, I have not done that in a long time. I haven't made a reading vlog since maybe last summer. So yeah, the most I enjoy watching is either vlogs and wrap-ups and I still do wrap-ups, just a little bit different because I don't do monthly wrap-ups, but I have not made a vlog in a really long time. The first booktuber that I subscribe to that I still watch is probably Books and Quills or Rosiana, if you count Rosiana as a booktuber. They sort of were a segue into it. I watched a Rosiana video where she had Ariel Bissett on when Ariel Bissett was in London, and I was like, who is this Ariel Bissett girl? She was saying some really smart things in Rosiana's video, and then I found her channel, and then I saw that she just made book videos for the most part, um, and it kind of went from there of me discovering other people. I'm not 100% sure if there was somebody else in that time span that I first encountered that I still watch. It's totally possible, but I think Ariel Bissett through Rosiana was one of the first, or Books and Quills because she is friends with Rosiana too. The most recent booktuber that I subscribe to is probably um, Lucy Rutherford, Rutherford or Olivia Pope. Um, an old favorite booktuber, definitely I could say Brie for this because she's been one of my longest subscribers and one of my dearest friends on booktube, um, but also Rincey was one of the first booktubers that I found around the same time as I found Ariel Bissett, and one that I like was always very shy about commenting and stuff, and that over time I feel like we built sort of a rapport on comments and on Twitter, so it's really fun to kind of develop those relationships that you were really shy at first because they had such a larger audience than you that you were kind of like, oh, I'm not suited to be talking to you. Um, and then you kind of get over that because you guys have similar tastes. Yeah. Rincey's great and Brie is great. A new favorite booktuber, I feel like she's been getting all the love and I'm so happy about it and that's Claire from Claire Reads Books. I'm just gonna tell you guys, I was one of the first to find Claire and like, you know, talk about her on my channel and everybody else is joining me which is fine come on in and join me in this clear love but I was here first okay 
Claire is awesome if you love any analytical views at literature in the style of like Jen from Insert Literary Pun here. Um, Claire's really great. One of my pet peeves has to do with subscriber milestones and I think it is well and great that we recognize that people are subscribing to us and that we're building an audience through our thoughts and through our hard work through making videos and I totally get that but for me I have never felt the need to shout out the fact that I have reached any such milestone again it's whatever you want to do for your channel but for me it has never been like I want to be like thanks for getting me to 100 subscribers or thanks for getting me to 500 or to a thousand because I really feel like those numbers don't mean as much as the views on your videos and the comments that you get on your videos and the conversations that you have through those comments. Any amount of people can subscribe to you. You could have 20,000 subscribers and like 100 people could watch one of your videos. It really doesn't equate like the subscriber count means you have an established audience but it doesn't really equate into like views and relationships formed and like discussions had and for that reason I've never really talked much about subscribers because I'd never want to say like woohoo I made it to 1500 subscribers because does it really matter? It doesn't mean a thousand people are watching my video around like 300 to 400 maybe might watch my video you know so that's how I feel about subscriber counts and like talking about how many subscribers we have. One thing I have learned from watching other booktubers is that we all read very wide and we all have very insightful and thoughtful things to say about books that make my reading experience that much bigger. I could have an opinion about a book and then I could hear somebody else's opinion and then it could open up my opinion even more. Sometimes the experience of reading is very solitary and you can come to it and have your opinion be like, this is what I thought. But then once you bounce off ideas off of other people or hear what other people have to say about something you just read, you get to understand how their lived experience affects the way that they think about a book and how it affects them. And in turn, that's gonna affect you. I really really like that about booktube that we could all read the same book but we'll all have different ideas come to our brains after we're done with it. Tag some of my favorite booktubers. I don't know who has not done this tag. I will look and lurk around and see who has and then I will leave people that I would like to tag to do this tag. Did I say tag enough? Thanks so much for watching my video and I shall see you in my next one. Bye bye!